What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. We're gonna go over the exterior covering all the ports, buttons, the sensor, the build, and then we'll also take a look at the menus, going through setup and navigation. So starting with the exterior build, we have a plastic casing on it with some vent fans on the top here, as well as on the bottom for heat dissipation. In between that, you have your sensor, which is a micro four thirds mount sensor. On either side of the sensor, you have your stereo microphone input. So you have your left channel and your right channel. The only thing to note about this is that the right channel is pretty much where your hand is gonna be. So your fingers are almost touching that while you're trying to record if you're doing some handheld work. So just be aware of that when you're shooting with it. Right above the left channel, you have a small red tally light. So if I start recording here, you're gonna see that turns on red and you can either toggle that on or off if you don't want your talent to know you're recording. Above the right stereo mic, you also have another start and stop record button. And this is kind of in a weird place. The only way that I've found to really use this effectively is if you're doing in a vlog style, you can have your thumb basically placed right on top of it. So you can easily start and stop recording with one finger. Going around to the right side, you have your battery grip, which the battery goes in the bottom. It's an LPE6 battery, so a standard Canon battery. Uh, you will need quite a few of these because they only last about half an hour on a charge, depending how much you're actually recording. Up on the right side of the camera, you have your card slot. So you have one CFast 2.0 card and one SD card slot. If you wanna record at the highest format, which is 4K 60 12 bit, you will need to have that CFast card. No SD cards are gonna be fast enough to be able to write to it. Uh, so most of the time I just use the CFast card so I can record however I want to. Going around to the back side, you have a few buttons on the side here. The first one is going to be your auto aperture, so adjusting your exposure. The next one is your single point autofocus, so autofocus to wherever your point is on the screen. You have your high frame rate, which will jump you right into your high frame rate mode, however you have that set up if you have it to 120 and 1080 or 4K 60. That's a really nice feature and actually flips over really quickly into those modes so you can just jump back and forth. And if you're using shutter angle, you won't have to adjust your shutter speed to compensate for the uh, frame rate shift. You have a magnification to zoom in on your image just to check focus. You have your menu button, which gets you into the menu, which we'll dive into in a little bit. And then you have your playback button, which brings up your image playback and you can go through all of your old clips that you've recorded. Right next to that, you have this massive touchscreen LCD that you can see. And again, we'll dive into this in a little bit, but it's a really nice screen, really good brightness, has a lot of features in there, and you're able to adjust everything using that touchscreen. Going around to the left side of the camera, you have all of your ports. So starting at the top, you have your eighth inch microphone in and your headphone jack to monitor audio. You have your full size HDMI out, so you can send that out to a monitor. This only does 1080, so you can't do 4K out of that if you wanted to record into a separate recorder. Right below the full size HDMI, you have your 12 volt in for using AC power if you wanna plug it into a wall. You have a USB-C port for sending out to an SSD, so if you wanna have a bigger storage media like a 500 gig or a terabyte media, you can do it through that. And then you also have a mini XLR in for recording audio into the camera if you don't wanna use the eighth inch jack. Going to the top of the camera, you have one quarter 20 mount, but there is no hot shoe on this, so you can't use one of like the video mic pros or any of the on-camera shotgun mics unless you go through this quarter 20. You have the power on off switch right here. Then you have three custom buttons. I have them set up for exposure assist, so using false color. I have one to turn on and off my LUT, and then I have one for focus peaking so I can check focus really easily. Towards the front of the camera above the grip, you have another start stop record, which is the main one that you're gonna be using. A photo button to be able to take photos, which you're not really gonna use this for a photo camera, but if you wanna grab some stills that you just wanna have as like references for later. And then you have your ISO, shutter speed, and white balance buttons. So you can click that, it'll open it up in the menu, and then you can use the touch screen on the back to adjust whatever your settings are. And that's basically the exterior of this camera. It's laid out really well and they have a lot of the features that are nice to have on higher budget cameras. The only thing that I would have liked to have would be a few more function buttons. There's definitely enough space for it and to be able to add in a couple more custom features like adding in your frame guides along with all the other things that I said would be a really nice addition. Next up, let's turn the camera on and then we'll start going through the menus. So first we'll just turn the camera on. So after the camera boots up, after about four and a half, five seconds, you're gonna be able to record and you're gonna be greeted with your main interface. And this is where you're gonna do a lot of your navigation from. In the top left, you have all of your guides. So you have your zebras, focus peaking, aspect ratio, if you wanna change it from 239, 185, whatever you want, you can change it right in here. 
you have your frame guides, which is gonna be like your rule of thirds, you have your safety margins, and then the last one is your false color, and you can turn all of these on or off right from here, or you can set them up to the custom function keys like we looked at on the exterior of the camera. The next thing is our frames per second, and we can adjust it all right in here. Now this is the project frame rate, not the off speed, so if we wanted to change to off speed, then we can adjust what it's gonna actually be playing back at. So if we wanted it to be 60, 24, or 23, we'd set it up like that, and then when we get to our high frame rate button, we'll actually see it switches over to 60, playing back at 24. If we change this to our 60 frames a second for our project frame rate, then we went to high frame rate, it's gonna be playing back at the same speed. We want our project frame rate to be at whatever we're gonna be playing back at. The next setting is your shutter, and this we have set up at shutter angle, but you can also do it at shutter speed. You just have to change that in the menus. So right now we're at 180 degrees, and you can change it to whatever you want here, or if you hit the arrows, you can adjust it to something in between. We'll leave it at 180 degrees, and you can also turn on auto exposure. So what this is gonna do is allow you to adjust the exposure based on shutter speed, shutter speed, and then iris if the shutter speed can't be adjusted enough, or iris and then shutter speed. So kind of changing the priority of which one's gonna be used first. We're just gonna leave it on manual and we'll go back to 180 degree shutter. Next up is your iris and you're gonna have that same auto exposure tool over here. So you can adjust it and have whichever one you want first or only iris. And then you can adjust your aperture right here with this dial or by clicking the arrows to skip through them. Pretty self-explanatory. The next thing is your time code, and now you can change this from free run, where it's just gonna to continue to run, or it's gonna be time of day, or you can have it on record run, so when you hit record, it'll start counting up how long that clip has been. Next up is your ISO, and in here you can scrub from the lowest ISO at 100 all the way up to 25,600 just by using this little slider, or you can use the arrows to sort of step through it. We'll go back to 800. And then you have your white balance. You have some presets in here for tungsten, daylight, fluorescent, outdoor light, shade, and then cloudy days. You can do it custom in here, all the way from 2500 Kelvin, all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin, as well as some color correction. So this is plus and minus green, which is that number you see on the side here. And then you have an auto white balance where it gives you the square, you aim it at something white, and then you'll be able to update the white balance to that color. In the top right, you have your tint, which again, just brings up your white balance. You have your battery, you can change between voltage and percentage. We're at 19% right now. This thing tears through these LPE6 batteries, so I have a bunch of them on standby. I've also heard that this can kind of cut off any time below 20% with these LPE6 batteries, so hopefully it won't turn off too soon and I'll swap the battery out. In the bottom left, you have your codec, which we're shooting in raw three to one. Now you can't actually change it through here, you have to go into the menu, but I'll show you that in a second. You have this button right here, which is just a start and stop recording. And then you show your two cards. So card slot one, which is the CFAST, and card slot two, which is the SD card slot, how much time you have left on them. And as you change settings, that'll update in live time. So if we switch to our high frame rate mode, where we're shooting in 60 frames, you see now we only have 13 minutes of recording available. Go back, now we have 33. And then you see our resolution, so 4K DCI, so 4096 by 2160. You can also shoot UHD and HD, so 1920 by 1080, which you'll see in the menus. So that's basically the menus on the outside. Now if we jump into the menus, we're gonna start in the record tab, and this is where you're gonna choose your codec and quality. So right now we're set up in raw three to one, but we can go raw lossless, so that's capturing all of the information possible or we can go to four to one, which is a little bit more compressed. We can also switch out of raw and use ProRes, and we have the options of HQ, 422, LT, and proxy, so that's just making really small file sizes for proxy recording. Then you have your resolution, so 4K DCI, like I just said, 4096 by 2160. Ultra HD, 3840 by 2160, which is your 16 by nine aspect ratio. And then you have your 1920 by 1080 regular HD. We go over a page in this menu, we get to choose our dynamic range. So if you want it in video, extended video, which is a little bit more, or film. Film gives you the highest dynamic range. Then you have your project frame rate, which you can change anywhere between 2398 up to 60 frames per second. Your off-speed recording, so that's switching into your high frame rate mode. Off-speed frame rate, so when you turn that on, what are you actually recording in? Uh, and that'll give you how much you're actually being slowed down. So if we're at 60 frames a second, it's a little over two times slowed down. On the bottom there, you have your preferred card slot for recording. So this is just choosing which card that you wanna to record to. So we can select CFAST, SD, or fullest card. CFAST card is what we always record to because I don't use SD cards because you just can't get the full benefits of the camera. 
And then you have stop recording if card drops frame. So that means if the card's too slow, it'll automatically stop the card. That's a good way to tell if your card is not fast enough. And then the last page under the record settings, you have your time-lapse mode. So how many frames you wanna set up, you turn it on and off here, detail sharpening if you wanted to add some enhanced sharpening in camera. And then you can also record the LUT directly to the clip. So if you don't wanna deal with grading footage, you can just burn in the 709 look right into camera. Over to the next tab is your monitor. And in here you have options for your LCD, HDMI, and both. This is where you can set up a lot of your tools that are going out, the same that you can with the top left I back out of here, same as in here, all of these same tools are what's gonna be in the menu right here. So turning on your grid, your frame guides, your zebras, safe area, focus assist, false color, all of that. You can also set up, camera just died. Okay, quick intermission, you can go back in the menus. If you go over, you can also turn on what kind of display you wanna have. So if you wanna be showing the meters, like right now you can see the audio meters, or if you wanna be showing codec and resolution, you can see ProRes HQ, 4K DCI, kind of just changing what, what the display is. Going to audio, you can see all of the channels here, so left channel and right channel, and you can also switch those over to be mono if you wanted them to both be recording the same thing, and then adjust gains separately. So if you wanted to boost one up and have one down, just so you have that redundancy if something clips. Also in here, you can do your headphone volume and your speaker volume, so what it's playing back at and what your headphones are listening to. In the setup, this is your general information, so setting up the date and time. This is where you do shutter angle or shutter speed. If there's image stabilization on a lens, you can turn this on and off here. And this is also where you set up all of your custom functions, so those three buttons right on top, what you want those to be. So right now it's set up to F1 is false color, F2 is display let, and F3 is frame guides, and you can just go and cycle through to whatever you want. So if I want that to be focus assist, and then I can also set up some presets to automatically adjust to that. The next page in here is your tally lights. You can turn that on or off if you want your talent to be able to see that you're recording. And then your LED brightness for that tally light, low, medium, and high. If I have it on, I usually have it on low, but most of the time I turn it off because I don't want the talent to know I'm recording yet. Then we have our factory reset just to reset the whole camera if you're having some issues. Some firmware information, clip, playback, all of that stuff. And then you can go in and you can set up your Bluetooth. So if you wanna be able to control this camera remotely through the app, you can turn on the Bluetooth and set it up here. Then you have your presets. So this is bringing in preset LUTs or preloaded formats of like how you wanna use this camera, how all your functions are set up. You can load those right from here. And then LUTs, which they have a bunch of built-in ones. And so that's pretty much all of the menus. It's really easy to navigate. One of the easiest menu systems out there definitely outbeats Sony and Nikon and even Canon in some respects. It's just super well laid out and really made for video shooters. So I hope this video helped you guys. If you have any questions about this camera, how to set it up, any questions about features that are on it, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna try this camera out for yourself, there's gonna be links in the description as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.